Hello, welcome back to our uh, fundamental tutorials, our beginner tutorials for C sharp. Um, in the previous lesson, that was uh, lesson twelve. Uh, we looked at uh, methods. We actually looked at uh, a particular type of methods, that is, uh, methods that do not return a value. Uh, let me just open Notepad. Um, uh, notepad. Okay. Um, so uh, that's what we call the void uh, method. So um, void methods are methods that do not return uh, a value. The the reason um, they are called void actually void just stands for empty. So um, it means that uh, by calling them void method, um, we're saying they do not the value they return is empty. So um, uh, they, in, in, in essence, what it means is that they do not return anything. Um, there are uh, another class of methods apart from uh, void methods. There are methods that actually uh, return a value. You can call them return value methods. Uh, return value methods. Um, these methods, they are, they are very similar to the void methods. In fact, if, if you look at the uh, void method as a method that does that returns void, that it returns empty as a return value method, uh, you would understand what the return value method is in the sense that uh, th there's not much difference between the two. The, the void method can be seen as a return value method that does not return, uh, that returns an empty an empty um, object, or you could say it returns uh, it returns nothing. So um, if you if you remember in the previous lesson, in fact, let's open uh, Visual Studio and see um, what we wrote. So th this was our previous program. So in this program, you remember what we did, what the method uh, allows us to do. The method allows us to group. A, a, a class or a, a certain group of code, we we kind of group it and and we name that uh, that sequence lines of code. So that's this one, two, three, four, five, six. In here we have six lines. Uh, ideally, you could have um, uh, any number of, uh, any number of lines of code. So um, you group that line uh, those lines of code under one single name. And this is the name we gave. We gave that method. We call the method get full names. Remember, this name is whatever name you decide it to be. Um, you also give the method its return type exactly. So for this get full names, the return type is void. Okay. Now that means that because we said the return type is void, it means we do not expect this method to return anything. Now, um, you might be asking, what does that mean? Like the return, what, what does it mean to return something? Now, to return something means to serve as an expression. Remember, we looked at expressions. We looked at uh, Boolean expressions. We looked at string expressions. Now, if something returns a value or returns something, it means that particular thing is an expression. So what that means is that if a method returns a value, it means that method can serve as an expression. Now, remember the expression we, uh, we were talking about, th there are different types of expressions. So if a method, if a particular method returns a value type of int, for example, that's int, it means that method can be used in place of an int expression. Okay, um, I think uh, to, to, to give you a, a very good um, uh, or to give you a good uh, uh, look or, or a detailed um, look at, uh, at what a method, actually, a method that returns a value actually is, I think it it would uh, it would be good we, we write uh, a program. In fact, I think we can convert this particular program that we wrote 
into a method. So this method, I would like us to convert it to a method that returns a value and then you see where you would like to use a method that returns a value. So um, remember in this in this program, what we wrote this program, remember all the stress we went through. We had to go through the stress of making uh, these variables uh, public. Uh, okay, we didn't actually make them public, but we made them kind of global in the sense that we made we declared them as part of uh, uh, members of this class. Okay, um, I, I remember I remember I said we were not going to treat classes anyway. What we did with these uh, variables, this first name, middle name, last name, is that we made them global in the sense that they can be accessed from anywhere within. That is, we can access this first name, middle name, last name within this main method. Okay, this uh, within this curly brackets that's inside here and inside here okay we can access those method uh, those uh, variables and we can also access those same variables inside here okay and that's them here first name middle name last name okay now um, so because the reason why we had to do that actually um, for this uh, particular program is because this uh, particular method, we designed it in such a way that it, it does not return any value, okay? Uh, I will show you how we can actually make this program easier in the sense that, remember what these uh, lines of code are for, okay? These lines of code, we usually write them in our program whenever we want to get a person's first name, a person's middle name, and a person's last name. Okay, we want to get it from the user. Whenever we want to get those three um, uh, properties from the user, we we write these six lines of code. Okay, now using this method, this get full names method, because we've written these six lines of code inside and we've like packaged uh, those six lines under this uh, single name, get full names. It means Whenever we need to write these six lines, we can just write the single getful names. Okay, this is just like a revision of the first method. Okay, all right. So look at how we we call the getful names. We just wrote it as if it is it is a, as if it is a, a it is a statement on its own. Okay, the reason is because it is a void return. It is a void return type. Okay. A method that is of void return type, you can write that method as if it was um, it was a, a lines of code or, or as if it was a statement. Okay, so when you call that uh, method, all it does in the when the program runs it is that it will be replaced by those six lines of code. Okay, now. Um, what we would like to do in this program, we would like to edit it in such a way that, you see here, we wanted the user to give us his names, okay? That's his first name, his middle name, and his last name, okay? Now, if the user gives us his name, but we, we do that by calling, after telling the user entire names, we now call this uh, method, this void method, which allows the user to enter his first name, middle name, and last name. And when that occurs, um, the first name, middle name, and last name, they get stored, remember, they get stored inside these variables because that they are part of they are part of the six lines of code which we embedded inside um, this method. Okay. Now we want to we want to uh, set it in such a way that when we are calling that method, okay we would like immediately to get whatever um, the user's first name, middle name, and last name is, and then store that at the time we are calling the method, okay? It means we would like that method to return the first name, middle name, and last name, okay? Remember, first name, middle name, and last name, um, you, could, you could fuse them to the three together in such a way that they form one giant string, okay? All right, so um, to do that, 
this is how we're going to edit this method. First, we're going to uh, change this method and say, um, okay, actually we can uh, we can leave. Okay, let let's just change it. Uh, I don't want us to overload the method because that is another uh, topic entirely. So let's leave method overloaded. Let's change this method. Uh, this method. We're going to change it and we're going to call it. Uh, we're going to say it returns of. Uh, it returns type string. Okay. Now by writing string here before this, uh, the name of the method. It means the method is expected to return the value or uh, a value of type string. Okay. Now, when you declare a method as a particular value type, that is, it is uh, of return type. Before this closing bracket, you have to return what will be returned by the method. Okay, you have to write um, the uh, or the implementation that says this is what should be returned. Okay, okay. Um, now uh, I would like to do something like uh, now I would I would change this first name to I'm going to uh, I'm going to declare a new variable. Look at what I did. Instead of using this first name, middle name, last name. I'm going to create a local variable now. Remember, the variable I'm creating here, I'm declaring it within these brackets, uh, within, within these curly brackets. So it means whatever variable I declare here, the scope of that variable is limited within these brackets. Okay? All right. Um, I'm going to uh, call this f, uh, f name, which stands for first name. Okay? Then I'll call this uh, M name. I don't want them to be the same name with the uh, initial variables, these ones. So that's why I'm changing the, changing the name. So I'll call this string. So this is the declaration of this local variable, M name. And then finally, I'll call this string L name. Okay. All right. Um, by doing this, I have... I have just what I've just done. Okay, there's not much uh, uh, difference with the method before, but what I've just done in essence is, I have removed the um, the necessity for these three variables. Okay, now um, if you look at this method, it is no longer we are no longer accessing these three variables from inside this method. Okay. So um, in programming, especially object-oriented programming, this is more like a decoupling. Okay, when you separate, um, when you separate, or if you make a method independent of other parts of your program, you have actually decoupled that particular method. Okay, um, I know this might not really make much sense, but um, just keep it at the back of your mind that uh, in, in, in object-oriented programming, decoupling is, is actually a good thing, okay? It's, it's actually a good thing. You don't want um, your code to be intertwined or to be dependent on, on, uh, of each other, okay? You would want a method to be independent as much as you can, okay? You don't want it to um, depend. What I mean by that is, obviously, at, at some point, your a, a method is going to depend on something, but you don't want it to depend too much on uh, things that are outside the method. Okay? All right. Uh, so that's what I've just done. I've create, declared these uh, variables within the method. So... Um, it means I have decoupled the uh, I have decoupled the method from these three variables. Okay, all right, uh, and then finally, because this method is of type string, I have to return what uh, the method is going to return. Okay, so to do that, you have to write R E T U R N return, and then you write whatever it is you want it to return. Now, you can actually do computations here, or you can write uh, an expression here, okay? The expression you're going to write here has to be 
of type string. The reason is because this method, we've already declared it as being of type string. So when you're going to return an expression, the expression you're going to return has to be of type string. Okay. So the expression we're going to return is, um, we're going to start with the first name and then we'll concatenate that with a space. Okay. Um, let's scroll back down. Okay. I'm concatenating with a space. The reason I'm concatenating with the space is because um, we don't want the first name to be written and then um, attached next to the middle name and then next to the last name. Anyway, um, I think what we should do is uh, let's just attach it together so that um, you'll see why uh, we we'll need to use the uh, spaces in between. So for now, forget about um, the... Uh, the spacing of the first name, middle name, and last name. Let, let's just concatenate them together. So I'm going to concatenate the first name with the middle name, middle name, and then with the last name. Okay. All right. So I'm saying it should return the first name. Remember, this is a string. This is a variable of type string, which holds the first name. Remember, at this point, uh, the user must have entered his first name and this will hold the first name of the user and then it will concatenate it with middle name and then concatenate it with last name and then it will return the large string that's the giant string that has the concatenation of this this and this together it's going to be returned by this method okay so this is what a method that returns uh, a type of string looks like okay so you usually have your lines of code and then at the end after you've written all the lines of code that needs uh, that need to be executed at the end of the method you write this return and then you provide it the expression that needs to be returned by that method okay all right now in this uh, get full names uh, notice we are no longer going to write it like this because um, if we write it like this it's just like us writing first name middle name last name okay this is remember this is now a string expression okay so what we can do now is we can actually um, we can actually uh, write something like uh, first name um, uh, Sorry, I uh, would use, um, okay, maybe in the name of my variables, uh, I don't have any variable, okay. So let's, let's edit, uh, let's edit these ones. So we're going to, we're going to create this variable and we're going to call it string user full names. Okay, and then we're going to make this um, user mother full names okay and then we're going to call this user father um, I'm going to use a capital F here user father full names okay okay so we have um by the way we can actually remove all these um lines of code they're not necessary because we're not using them at the moment okay so um I've declared these three uh, strings okay in inside this string I'm going to store the full names of the user that's his first name his middle name and his last name all con concatenated together the same thing inside here I'm going to store the user's mother's uh, full names that's her first name her middle name and her, and her last name okay and then um, inside here inside this variable we're going to store the user's father's full names okay so notice what we're going to do here. Remember, we've already told this method, this get full names, to return first name, middle name, and last name. Okay. So here we can actually do something like this: user full names equal get full names. Okay. The same thing here. We can do user um, mother full names equal 
get full names okay um, notice we're calling this method get full names but however the way we're calling it we're calling it as if it is a as if it is a string expression remember when you say user full names is a variable you're saying you're going to assign it something and then you're calling the method okay when it gets here something needs to be returned okay but what needs to be returned it doesn't know it has to go into the method first execute one two three four five six six lines of code and then finally it this gets returned okay so the user's full names is going to get returned okay and then it's going to be stored inside the user's full names and then finally here we're going to say user um okay we made a mistake uh, we made a little mistake if you look at enter your father's names so this is supposed to be the user's uh, father full names here um, this should be capital F and then here is going to be user mother full names okay equals get full names okay so um, if you look at the way we've restructured the program now we've done it in such a way that immediately um, you call uh, this method this get full names you are expecting something to be returned and what you are expecting to be returned is a first name a middle name and a last name okay so whenever you call this method you expect a first name a middle name and a last name to be returned okay in this case when you call the method you immediately assigned whatever it's returning into this variable okay in this case you return whatever it is uh, you assign whatever it is returning into this variable okay same here you um, assign whatever it's returning into this variable okay um, let's run this program and just see what it uh, it looks like for now. Okay, so I've clicked on the play button, and uh, it says enter your first names. Okay, so I write uh, Mustafa middle name. Uh, there's no middle name, so I'll just press enter. Then my last name, and then it says it asks me to enter my father's names. Okay, so. Uh, enter anything oh okay um there's no much difference if you remember because um at, at the end uh it just allows us to enter the names but at the end we didn't actually tell it to print out um anything so um i think at the end of this method uh, at the end of the program before it exits let's uh write something we're going to write console dot uh right line right line um, your names or uh, let's say your full names okay um, we're going to add plus um, so we're going to put user full names okay and then console dot right line your uh, father father's full names then we're going to concatenate that with uh, user father full names Okay, let's not forget our semicolon and then we're going to output console the right line um, your mother's full names. Okay, we're going to output user uh mother full names okay let's not forget our semicolon okay let's go ahead and run this program if you if you look at it what it's just doing is we're just um outputting 
whatever it is will be stored inside these variables okay at the end of the program so let's run it and see what uh, what happens okay my first name I'm going to put in my first name no middle name last name um, then uh, father's first name um, let's just put in s father's middle name um, let's put a tail father's last name uh, let's put off man mother's first name h middle name uh, no middle name last name okay and then we press enter okay so you see your full names it writes um, my full names and then your father's full names it writes because it is outputting um, this is what gets outputted um, uh, this is what gets uh, output um, it, it concatenates your father's full names with whatever is stored inside here it concatenates your full names with whatever gets um, stored in here okay and what um, uh, does uh, what what creates or what generates what gets stored inside these variables is actually these methods okay that we've just seen um uh now okay um uh by the way if you look at uh the names there are no spacing in between so for example this mustafa Othman, there's no spacing in between the mustafa and Othman, and that was what i was saying uh when i was writing this method i was saying um there should be spacing in between first name, middle name, and last name, okay? So I think now if I go in here and add a concatenation of a space, okay? So we're, we're adding a quote, okay? As if to say we're going to type something in here, okay? However, we're not typing anything. All we're doing is we're giving just a blank space, okay? That's the meaning of these um, two uh, quotation marks. It's just to allow us to add a blank space. And then after the blank space, we're going to add a plus to signify that we want this first name to be concatenated with these um, bl this blank space and then to be concatenated with this middle name. And then we would like also to concatenate that with another space. Okay. And then the space gets concatenated with the last name. Okay, so um, let's just go ahead and run this program again and see what happens by adding these um, uh, these spaces. Okay, it means it's going to space out your first name, your middle name, and your uh, your last name in the full names. Okay, so uh, let's do that. Uh, no middle name, none. Uh, father's names, first name, I'm going to put S. Um, uh, let's say J L and Othman, and then H and the name Othman. Okay, so um, notice what happens your full names, Mustafa, and then there's a space, okay. And that space you're seeing, actually, there are two spaces, okay? The, there are two spaces in between. The reason there are two spaces is because after the first name, it puts, uh, it, it put this space, this first space, and then it tries to write the middle name. However, because there's no middle name in, in, uh, in, my, in my name, that's why um, there's no middle name. So it, uh, it tries to write... Uh, the space the next space that's this space okay and then after that space it then writes the last name as the last that's why you are having two spaces so the first space is this and then the second space is this and then you can see in the uh, father's full names there's the first name then the space then the middle name then the space then the last name uh, here the, there are also two spaces in the sense that there's the first name and then a space there's no middle name then a space then the last name okay so um the whole essence of uh this uh lesson is just to show you the difference between a method that 
that does not return a value and a method that returns a value, okay? And remember, your methods, they can return whatever value type uh, you want, okay? For here, um, we use a string because that's the most suitable for us to return a person's full names, okay? In, in there are there are there are methods where you would like to return uh, probably say um, <coughs> an int or a, or a, um, or a float for example imagine a method that takes um, that takes a number for example or takes an angle and then uh, an angle in degrees okay and then converts that angle to radians and then returns the result okay in that sense you would need that method to be of type float okay um, uh, maybe later on in our lessons we would come over some methods where we would use numeric uh, return types but for this method um, we'll just look at the string uh, return type uh, remember also we said uh, methods can actually take arguments okay arguments are also called uh, parameters you can actually have parameters now what's the use of parameters parameters are for when you have some um some items okay and you want to you want that method to also have those items if you notice uh, here what we did is we actually just um, declared these uh, these variables as uh, global variables okay so we were actually able to use those variables as in the initial in, in the initial program we wrote we were able to use these variables inside the method okay now imagine if we wanted uh some uh, uh these variables are holding some items that we need to use inside these um uh, lines of code we are writing in that case we will need to pass those variables uh, assuming we don't want them to be global okay we we, we want them to be de uh, decoupled from the method then we will we'll need to pass those variables into as parameters inside uh, here in between these brackets um, maybe um, this is not the best lesson to look at methods that take parameters perhaps later in our in our in, in our future lessons we'll come across where uh, some methods where we will need to pass parameters um, I would like to stop here for this lesson and I hope um, you have gained or you've understood how to use methods that return values and you know the difference between methods that return values and method that uh, return void return type and how to write uh, them so for void return type you don't write the return statement at the end and then and also this has to be void okay and then for return type you have to declare the return type at the beginning of the method and then inside the method um, uh, at the return uh, in the return uh, statement the, the the expression you have to provide here has to be of type of same type as the type you provide um, when you were declaring the method okay